Good morning and welcome back to Swamp and Stomp. So today, this is going to be our first time doing some fishing on the show. And uh, we're going to be going out in this new John boat that I just picked up. It's a low 1236 John boat. And the point of this boat is uh, I'm going to be building uh, a little uh, duck boat out of it, put a mud motor on it. Uh, but today we're just making sure that it floats and taking it out to catch some snakeheads. If you want a chance to win both of these shirts for free, all you have to do is make sure that you're subscribed to our channel. And if you want to get more entries into this raffle, just click right here to get more info about the raffle. What hit song are you singing, Mark? The most annoying song in the world. Awkward. Yeah, I know. It's been awful quiet. Oh, we want them. Where? Where? Oh, yeah. Oh, there's like 12 of them, babe. There's so many. Should we go get the gun from the car? At what time are you going to be there too? Um, probably no later than noon. If anything changes, um, just give us a call back so we can just update the information. Okay, great. Thank you very much. That was pretty easy. Okay. Now we can start freaking people out. All right, guys. So we're out here in Sunrise, and we've been doing a little bit of fishing on the new boat, and uh, we came across whole bunch of iguanas that you'll see in just a second. They're all sitting here on the bank getting some sun because it's pretty cold. And um, so we just called the PD to let them know that uh, we're going to be removing some uh, iguanas with an air rifle. So we're going to move along the bank here and see if we can pick them off along the bank while they're getting their sun. Now, as you know, it's not a good idea to have a boat that's unnamed. So drop a comment down below and let us know what you think that this boat should be named. All right, so I just got an iguana uh, and I shot it right out of the boat. I stole a whole bunch of them down there. So I'm gonna try and do it uh, a slightly different way. Basically took some 30 pound mono or fluorocarbon and tied up like a little uh, sliding noose knot. So I, if I can get this around their neck and I pull on it, it's going to tighten around their neck. Just an iguana. Yeah. Yeah. They're really delicious. Oh, you cook them any which way you cook chicken. They call them call it, uh, chicken of the trees. And they're invasive, so you're doing you know, the state a favor if you get rid of them. So. You should mm -hmm. check out the YouTube channel. It's called Swamp and Stomp. That's you. <laughs> we look. Swamp, Swamp and Stomp. Stomp. I shall when I get back. <laughs> All right. So that's a future subscriber. We're going to go give this a try.
Babe, get the bat. Get the bat. It, it, I don't know. I think it's in the back of the boat. strong line and then give him a good whack and then it's game over This is all just a part of being an outdoorsman in the city. I don't know what the hell this thing is. Looks like it's been in there for a little while though. It's all scraped up. You guys, uh, if you guys think you know what it is, drop it down in the comments. Cause I got no clue. That is how you change a tire on a Tacoma. Now, if you're anything like most people, when you see iguanas on the side of the road, your first thought isn't to try and kill them and eat them. But the fact of the matter is, is that their meat is a lot like chicken. That's why a lot of people call them chicken of the trees, and they are super delicious. So anytime I get an opportunity to harvest a few, I'll take them and put them in the freezer. Now, hunting iguanas isn't exactly what most people would consider hunting. I mean, you're wandering around in the city picking off what is essentially a pest. So FWC sort of like opened season on them and encouraged everybody to go out and harvest them. It's important to keep in mind that even though iguanas are a major pest and cause a lot of damage to the ecosystems here, they're still an animal and they still have a life that you're going to be taking. And that shouldn't be taken lightly. So whenever you are planning to take an animal's life, you need to make sure that you use as much of that animal for food or any other purpose as possible. All right, I'm gonna clean up the first two. Um, and while I do that, you guys get to watch a little bit of the monster jam that me and Bree went to last night, which was really cool because we came home from uh, this fishing hunting trip and some friends of ours had some extra tickets left over and they offered them up for free. It's not something that I would normally go to, but you know, who's going to turn that down for free? And it honestly was super cool and I had a great time and I got some really cool footage. So check that out while I clean up this iguana.
right, so I've cleaned up the two smaller ones. Now I'm gonna clean this big guy up. I'm gonna show you how I do it. Oh, and here you can see there's a lot of dirt on my hands just from touching it. So before I do that, I'm just gonna give it a quick rinse to get all the dirt off. Because as with any other animal, if you get the dirt on that meat, it's like hard to get it off. So anyway, I'll pinch the, the uh, skin right here over the, uh, the spine, and I'm just gonna work my knife back and forth until it pokes a little hole right there. So now I'll just turn this knife around, get the gut hook right in there under the skin. I'm gonna pull it right down. Oops. I swear it usually goes smoother than this. Right down, about like halfway down the tail. Once you get further down the tail, it just gets really hard to get that meat out because it gets so small. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the tail off about halfway. And now once you've done that, and I'll extend this slit up the neck. Once you've done that, you really don't need the knife to get the rest of the skin off. You can actually just start peeling it by hand. Peel this right off the back, and then you can just peel the tail right down, just like that. Once you're down here, we're gonna peel off the legs. So just start working your way around the, the legs, pushing the skin away from the meat. And once you get to where you can get it over the knee, then you're in good shape. And you're gonna stick your finger in between the meat and the skin. So you basically have like a hole. See how my thumb's coming out the other side? And then you're just gonna grab a hold of the leg and the skin and pull. This takes a little bit of strength. And there you go. You pull. And that's just gonna peel all the skin right off the toes. Once you get the first one done, it's a lot easier to do the second one. Do the same thing on this side. All right, so once you get to the neck, I just take my knife, make a cut, and then I just twist. So the whole thing comes off. So anyway, grab all the organs, the heart, the lungs, all that stuff. Pull those out. Just you can just tear them right out. Just like that. Just pull. Throw that in your gut pile. Look at all those eggs. Look at all that. Now right, we're gonna give this quick rinse. Get all this stuff out of here. All right. That looks a little better, doesn't it? Okay, so now we're gonna get all the meat off of here. So I like to start with the tail. <clears throat> and I'm gonna switch knives for this one. All right, so for the tail, what I like to do, if you come right down here, you can feel these hip bones. Let me turn that around so you can see it. You can feel these two little hip bones right here. That's pretty much where the good meat ends. So you're gonna cut right down behind that. And you'll notice there's a good amount of meat right here. So what you're gonna do is the spine runs all the way down the tail. So you're gonna run your knife right along the edge of that spine and you're gonna use the spine as a guide. You're gonna run right down it as far back as you can go. All the way to the end. And then you can actually start to peel you can start to peel that meat away. You pull on it and run your knife along the base. And keep on freeing up more and more meat. Just like this. Keep on doing that. So eventually you reach the edge of the spine. And then you just put your knife in there and cut along it. And just do that 
along the entire length of the tail. Alright, so once you got the tail cleared off, we're gonna take the legs. So I'll take the back leg, just kind of figure out approximately where that joint is. Just start cutting in, and you'll see the ball joint right there. Just cut the meat all around it. Put your knife right in that ball joint. Press down. There you go, the leg pops off. There's our legs. Now, it might look like there's a lot of meat left on there, but there really isn't. It weighs almost nothing. And, and these ribs really just don't have any meat on them. Um, so this is pretty pretty darn good. I mean, there's a couple little nuggets here. If you plan on frying it anyway, these little nuggets are gonna be great covered in batter. Uh, now to get the feet off of here, you're just right around the joint, it's actually pretty easy. You just cut, you kind of rotate the feet, and you'll find a sweet spot at some point where it'll just it's all cartilage, you cut right through it. Would you look at all this meat that we just got off of this? There's probably, I don't know, three pounds of meat here. So I'm gonna rinse this all off, put it in Ziploc bags and uh, stick it in my freezer. All right guys, that's all I've got for you today. Thank you for watching. And uh, I hope that you enjoyed that. I know that I did. I never expected that iguana hunting was going to be as fun as it actually was, so I'm definitely going to be doing it in the future. And like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I just bought this John boat, so I'm going to be transforming that into a duck boat. So if you're interested in seeing how to do that, make sure that you subscribe to the channel. Um, also, I'm going to be doing some more iguana hunts, and I'm going to be making some specialized like snares and things like that that are going to be a little more equipped for the job. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I got for you guys. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do it now by clicking right down here. And if you're interested in seeing some of our other hunting videos, we got a deer hunting video up here, we got duck hunting over here, and a hog hunt right here. So thanks for watching, and until next time, stay safe, be diligent, and good luck in the woods, guys.